Example 52. Find the probability of guessing the correct answers on three different multiple choice questions that have five answered choices each. All right, so it's a probability problem. That's clear, right? Find the probability. So we know it's a probability question. The only thing to figure out is then what kind of probability are we dealing with? Well, if you look at the problem here, it says we're taking guesses on three different multiple choice questions. If you're taking a guess on one question, that's only one event, the event of selecting one answer choice for that one question. But when you're guessing on three questions, there are three separate events. You take an answer choice for the first one, one for the second question, and one for the third question. So this makes it, in that case, um, more than one event, a multiple event problem. And whenever that happens, you're dealing with the multiplication rule of probability. So when handling multiplication rule, we start out pretty much the same as before. We write a probability statement. We write the probability of, and in this case, we're looking for three correct guesses out of three guesses, right? We won't write all of that. We'll just write three correct guesses. And by the context of the problem, we'll remember that it's out of three guesses. So because it's only three guesses, we'll have three spaces. The three spaces represent the three guesses. We're going to put multiplication between them because we're handling the multiplication rule. So this is the vital part of the problem that you put as many spaces as there are events. So if there are three guesses being made, you'll need three spaces. And then the next thing you need to do is to think about what that first space represents. You need to say, okay, what is this first space? Well, of course, that's the first guess, right? The first guess that's being made. And then the question is, what do you want to have happen on that first event? Well, we want the first guess to be correct because that's what the problem is says. It says all three are correct. So what that first space becomes is the probability the first guess is correct, right? And then what do you think the second space will represent? Well, that would be a probability as well. And that second space is for the second guess, right? And then again, it's the second guess is correct, right? It's the probability the second guess is correct. And then so on and so forth, right? The last space is the same, but it's for the third guess. All right, so now that you know what that is, the next thing to do is to figure out how to state this simple fraction. So don't look at all three at the same time. Look at them one at a time. This fraction here, we want to figure out how it should be structured. Well, it is always basic probability when you're down to the single fraction level. So at, once we're at a single fraction, we're just focusing on that fraction. We're talking about basic probability. And you remember what that means then. Basic probability leads to this idea of number of over total, right? So you'd be saying to yourself, well, if I want the first guess to be correct, then I'm thinking, well, how many correct answer options are there? So I would say number of correct answer choices, right? Answer choices. So how many correct answer choices are there? Well, you know, on a multiple choice test, typically there'd only be one correct answer choice out of the list of options, right? So that will be one. And then what are the total number of answer choices, right? Answer choices. So that's the next thing to figure out. Well, that's pretty easy. The number of correct answer choices, as we said, should just be one. And the total number of answer choices is given in the problem because they say there are, what, five answer choices each. So it's a one-fifth chance that when we take a random guess on a question, we get it right. All right, now looking at the second question, we always have to stop and ask a question about this. We have to say, well, whatever happens here, will that affect what happens here? So on my second guess, will it be affected by the first guess? And I would say no, especially if it's just that you're Christmas training the test, if you're just taking random guesses, you might not even be reading the problem, right? So there's nothing that the first problem can do to help you do better on the second one. If you get it right or wrong, you wouldn't even know. And even if you did know that you got it right or wrong, how does that help you do better on the next question? It doesn't really. So at that point, it's still the same probability because we're going to ask the same question then, right? We'll say, hey, number of correct answer choices for the second question? Well, again, there'll only be one correct answer choice typically. How many total answer choices? Typically five, right? According to the problem, it says there are five answer choices for each question. And then so on and so forth for the next one. So this is a scenario where the probabilities are independent. The events are independent. And that means that the second guess does not affect the first. The third guess does not affect the second. 
right? The first guess doesn't affect the second or the third, you know, no, in no combination do any of these affect the other. So in this point, it's considered independent, and that means we can just repeat the probability over and over again and multiply straight across for this problem. And we end up with 1 over 125, because 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 more is 125. And at that point, you'd say it's less than 1% chance that a person would guess their way to 100%. And in fact, it'd be less, you know, less, less than a 1% chance that you would even guess to a passing grade in that sense, since the only way to pass a three-question quiz is to get all three correct.